So in this lecture, we are going to discuss an uh, important theorem related to subgroups and the name of that theorem is subgroup criteria. So let me write the statement of this subgroup criteria. So if H is a non-empty subset of uh, G, where G is a group, so G star is a group, okay, then H is a subgroup of G if and only if for all A, B belonging to H, A star B inverse, that is A, B inverse should belong to H. So this is the theorem, this is a statement of subgroup criteria. Now we will uh, prove the first part of this particular theorem so let me write part one so proof with part one so in the first part i will assume what i will assume that h is a subgroup of g okay and i have to show what i have to show a b inverse belongs to h if a and b both belong to h okay so now how will I prove this particular? But it is very easy. I have already assumed that H is a subgroup. Since H is a subgroup, then it means by above theorem, uh, three things will hold. So by above theorem, closure, then identity, and inverse, these hold, right? So these properties hold. So now what I will do is I will take two elements A and B in H. So let A and B belong to H. What I have to show, I have to show that A, B inverse also belongs to H. Okay, now how will I show that A, B inverse belongs to H? So now A is in H, it's fine. But what I will do is for B, I know that if B is in H, implies b inverses also in h why b inverses in h because we know that inverses uh, exist in a subgroup because h is a subgroup right so h is a subgroup of g so this means that a is in h and b is in h i'm sorry not b b inverses in h and therefore by closure i can say clearly that a into B inverse is also in H. So A star B inverse also belongs to H. That is A B inverse belongs to H. So this means the part one of our theorem is proved. Now this part was very easy. Now we have to go to the uh, converse of this part. So part two. So let A B belong to H imply A B inverse belongs to H. So this is given to us. Okay. So this property is given to us. Whenever I take two elements, what belongs to H? The first element star, second element inverse belongs to H. And now I have to show have to show that H is a subgroup of G. So to show that H is a subgroup of G, we know that we don't have to prove all the four properties. We have to prove only three properties, closure, then identity and inverse property. We need only three things. So uh, let us uh, do one thing. We will do the closure part a little bit later. Okay, we will first prove the identity belongs to H. Since so let A belong to so I'm doing the part of what I'm doing the part of identity exists. I'm doing that part first. I will do the closure part a little bit later. Okay, identity exists. Why? We will write the reason here. So let let A belong to H. 
and let again a i will take the same element a and a again so this means that by our uh, assumption by our assumption what will happen as i told you in the assumption if i take two elements in the uh, in the set then first element star the second element inverse belongs to h so this means that a star a inverse the second element is also a a star a inverse also belongs to h that is by our assumption but what is a star a inverse a star a inverse is e and e belongs to h so this means that the identity element actually belongs to the set h now we will prove the inverse part okay so inverses exist why does the inverse exist in h so let uh, let a belong to h be some element and we know that identity also belongs to h right so we have two elements but we will shuffle them hence identity i will just shuffle them hence identity belongs to h and a belongs to h and therefore what does the property say by our assumption what can i do now first element star second element inverse okay so this means that identity star a inverse this multiplication belongs to h this is our assumption first element star second element inverse but what is identity star a inverse identity star a inverse is a inverse belongs to h so i started with an element a in h and now i have reached that a inverse also belongs to h therefore we have concluded that inverse exists in h inverse exists in h now let us go to the closure part so once this closure part is over by about 3 we can declare that h is a subgroup of g right so let us take two elements now let a belong to h and let b also belong to h okay i want to show what i want to show i want to show that a star b belongs to h now how will a star b belong to h now we know that a belongs to h since since a belongs to h uh, we will keep this a belongs to h as it is let, let us concentrate on b belongs to h since b belongs to h now we know that inverses exist in our uh, subgroup so therefore by that part i can say that b inverse also belongs to h so if b belongs to h then b inverse inverse also belongs to h now i will use this b inverse for my calculation right so since a belong a belongs to h and b inverse also belongs to h therefore by our assumption what is our assumption that first element star second element inverse remember that don't forget it okay by assumption first element star second element inverse belongs to h but what is b inverse inverse we know that b inverse inverse will turn up to be how much will turn up to b and therefore a star b also belongs to h so this means that we have taken a in h we have taken a b in h and we have now proved that a star b also belongs to h and therefore we have shown that the closure exists in closure holds h becomes a h is a subgroup of g is proved so this means that part 2 is also proved okay now let us prove one very important result related to our subgroups so let me prove that result so let h and k be two subgroups of g then h intersection k is also a subgroup of g this means that intersection of subgroups is a subgroups in other words i will write it as intersection of 
subgroups is a subgroup remember this step okay in your uh, in your metric spaces course you will learn a similar result saying that intersection of open sets is also open it's something like that okay so the picture with us is something like this this is your g and this is your h and this is your k the common element between h and k is identity there are some other elements also and this set is your h intersection k this is already a subgroup h is a subgroup k is also a subgroup and we want to show that h intersection k is also what is also a subgroup so let us start the proof now so it's very simple so the solution is or the, the proof is let h and k be subgroups of g okay to show h intersection k is subgroup of g so if i want to show h intersection k is a subgroup what will i use now i know that if i want to show something is a subgroup i have one very simple idea with me that simple trick is nothing but use the subgroup criteria so i will take two elements a and b let a and b belong to h intersection k because i want to show that this is a subgroup right then by subgroup criteria by subgroup criteria i have to show what by subgroup criteria i have to show that a b inverse belongs to h intersection k a and b are in h intersection k i have to show that a into b inverse is also in h intersection k this is sufficient to show that h intersection k is subgroup because of the subgroup criteria right now how will i show that now a belongs to h intersection k so a is in h intersection k if some element belongs to h intersection k means that that element is here okay and b is also in h intersection k this means that if you look at h alone this means that a and b belong to h not only that if you look at k and if you don't look at h this means that a and b also belong to the set k so the meaning of this is that a and b belong to h intersection k will give me that a belongs to h and a also belongs to k i also know that b belongs to h intersection k means b belongs to h and b belongs to k now we will take suitable people and adjust them now i know that a belongs to h and i know that b belongs to h so a belongs to h and b belongs to h but i know that h is a subgroup of g similarly i know that a belongs to k and b also belongs to k but i know that k is also a subgroup of g therefore what will i get uh, by subgroup criteria what can i say by subgroup criteria therefore by subgroup criteria for h and a b in h i can say that a b inverse must belong to h similarly k is a subgroup of g and a and b are in k therefore by subgroup by subgroup criteria a b inverse must also belong to k this means that a b inverse is an element in h also and ab inverse is an element in k also and therefore ab inverse belongs to what ab inverse belongs to h intersection k and this is what exactly we were we were wishing to prove right so ab inverse belongs to h intersection k therefore by subgroup criteria i can now say that h intersection k 
is nothing but a subgroup of G. Hence, the result is proved. The next exercise, what we will try to uh, see is that if I have H and K are two subgroups of uh, group G, okay, then what can I say about h union g okay is h union g i'm sorry is h union k a subgroup of subgroup of g okay so let us see how to answer this particular question okay now uh, let, let us take one simple example let me take let me take z12 as a group with respect to addition modulo 12 this is my group g okay and uh, the first subgroup h i'm going to take is i will take zero bar and uh, six bar okay and the second subgroup that i'm going to take is uh, let me take zero bar three bar six bar and nine bar so these are all multiples of three the above are multiples of uh, nine okay and the third subgroup that i'm going to take is i'm going to take zero bar four bar and eight bar now these are all multiples of what these are all multiples of uh, four okay so look at what is h1 union h2 what is h1 union h2 h1 union h2 is zero bar six bar this set union zero bar three bar six bar and nine bar the union of h1 union h2 is equal to what i'll combine all the elements zero bar three bar is there six bar is there and nine bar is there so this is h1 union h2 okay but if i look at h1 union h3 okay what is h1 union h3 h1 union h3 is zero bar six bar union zero bar four bar and 8 bar and this union is 0 bar 4 bar 6 bar 8 bar okay this is h1 union h3 so we have two two things with us now the first thing with us is that h1 union h2 is equal to 0 bar 3 bar 6 bar and 9 bar whereas h1 union h3 is 0 bar 4 bar 6 bar and 8 bar now if you carefully see h1 union h2 is nothing but all multiples of 3 and this was nothing but our uh, this was nothing but our h2 right so h1 union h2 is h2 and that is a, is a subgroup of g so what am i concluding i'm concluding in the first case that h1 union h2 is a subgroup of g whereas look at if you look at h1 union h3 okay h1 union h3 is it a subgroup of uh, our group g this is not a subgroup this is not a subgroup because if you add for add 4 bar and 8 bar modulo 12 this is nothing but 12 bar which is uh, congruent to what this is congruent to zero bar okay which it's not it's not good let me take instead of six bar and eight bar what is six bar plus eight bar it is 14 bar and it is more congruent to how much it is congruent to two bar but two bar is not a member here two bar is not in h1 union h2 sorry h1 union h3 so this means here the so this is not useful so here closure is not closure fails let me write closure fails to hold okay let's write it like this closure fails to hold so in this case i have now declared that h1 union h3 is not a subgroup of g and in the first case we have proved that it is a subgroup of g so when you have two conclusions that once for some examples it is coming to be a subgroup of g for some examples it is not coming to be a subgroup of g therefore my overall conclusion will be that if i'm asked a question that is h1 is if i take two subgroups then is the union a subgroup i know that sometimes it is yes 
sometimes it is no so the final conclusion that h union k need not be a subgroup of g always okay so what is our conclusion let us slide to our conclusion from this ex example the conclusion is if h and k are subgroups of g then h union k need not be a subgroup of subgroup of g okay sometimes it is yes sometimes it is no okay therefore this does not makes a theorem right a theorem is something which will give you a definite conclusion for example h k are subgroups of g then h intersection k is always a subgroup of g but what about a union h and k are subgroups of g h union k may be a subgroup may not be a subgroup means i cannot say anything definite therefore h union k need not be a subgroup of g okay